Good morning, church family. A quick announcement before we begin our worship of this fourth Sunday of Advent. Our dear brother Don Hall died yesterday afternoon, so let us keep Kami Joe and the family in our prayers. Also, Jim and Debbie Sowney have both tested positive for COVID. Jim is in the medical center at Bowling Green and Debbie is now quarantining at home. Let us keep the Hall family and the Sownies in our prayers this morning as we worship God. Even though our prayers previously recorded are different than the realities of these updates, we know that God listens and hears us in all of our prayers, our joys, and our concerns. Let us worship God this morning. Welcome to Franklin Presbyterian Church this Sunday for our worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here at Franklin Presbyterian Church, we seek God and serve all people as part of our call to live out our lives as Christians in the community of Franklin, Kentucky. And we do that by boldly loving God and boldly loving our neighbors, one of our visions as a congregation for next year. A reminder to make your prayer requests to myself or the church office or put them in the comments of Facebook or YouTube if you so choose, or contact your deacons or your elder to provide those prayer requests for the rest of the congregation to know about. A few announcements. Kids Club meets Wednesdays at 5 p.m. on Zoom, but this upcoming week will be a little different as the kids and the youth will meet together at 5 p.m. on Wednesday for their Secret Santa party. So that will be on a Zoom call as well, as it is usually. Sunday School Bible Study is meeting on Wednesday nights at 6.30 on Zoom. Check your email for the link to that. Youth Group and Youth Sunday School are meeting every Sunday night at 7 p.m. on Google Meet, as usual. And after this worship service today, Coco and Carols is happening at noon. Today, uh, check your email for a Zoom link for that. The youth and children will be leading part of that time. It will be a time to fellowship with everyone here in the church. So take a look for that Zoom link, get a cup of cocoa, and be ready to sing along and enjoy each other's company this afternoon for a little bit. Our Christmas Eve service will be happening. It will be outdoors at 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve behind the Cornerstone. At this point, we're looking at it as a drive-in service uh, due to the cold but you can also brave the cold and sit in your chair with a mask on if you so choose. Uh, candles and communion cups will be provided, so please uh, join us for that. We will also be live streaming that service for those unable to attend. And a reminder that I will be on vacation from Christmas Day through New Year's Day, so for any pastoral care needs during that week, please see the deacons or your elder. As we approach this fourth Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of love. Let us remember the hope, the peace, and the joy of worshiping our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ together. Let us worship God today.
call to worship. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For the Mighty One has done great things, and holy is God's name. Let us praise our holy and mighty God this morning. Passing of the Peace As we worship virtually, share the peace with each other throughout the week. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Call to confession. Let us confess our sins to the one whose mercy endures from generation to generation. Prayer of Confession. Faithful God, we know that you are always there to guide us, yet we often make plans without listening to you and discover that our human agendas can drown out our ability to hear your will for us. We repent of these faults and turn to you in love. Forgive our offences and pardon our sins, that our lives may magnify your holy name forever. Beloved, by the faith of Christ, your sins are forgiven. Blessed by the God of our salvation, whose mercy is everlasting. Thanks be to God. In Christ we are forgiven. Watch and wait for Christ's coming. We light this candle in hope. We light this candle in peace. We light this candle in joy. We light this candle in love. Out of love for the people of God, the Lord speaks through the prophet Isaiah as found in the seventh chapter, verses 4, 10 through 14. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as shoal or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my, my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Advent Prayer God of hope, Prince of peace, Jubilee judge, and Lord of love. Your goodness is beyond our wildest imaginings. You give us more than we can ask than we can think to ask, coming to us with impossible possibility in the union of flesh and spirit. Teach us to love this world and all people as you love us in Jesus Christ our Lord. God of promise, God of hope, into our darkness come. Amen. As we go to our God in prayer this morning, let us think and share the joys and concerns of our congregation this day. Continued prayer for Don Hall and Kami Joe and their son Cliff as they care for Don this week at home. 
Prayers for Jim and Debbie Sowning as Jim has spent most of the week, all of the week at Bowling Green at the Medical Center getting some new aggressive treatments as they work through the pain he's experiencing and also continue to fight against the cancer. So prayers for Jim and Debbie and for rest and encouragement and love. Prayers for Kathy's sister Marilyn and her son as they are both recovering from COVID. Continued prayers for Barbara Shriver as she's recovering and resting for, from her most recent procedures. Prayers for Donna Houston, joy for her recent cataract surgery and the upcoming cataract surgery she's having as well. And continued prayer for Larry Smith as he's uh, going through his treatments for cancer this week as well. Continue, continued good news in, in his treatment plan as well. We think also of the Tracy family, of Carol, continuing to grieve the loss of Russ and in our congregation as well, all of those who are ill or grieving or struggling at this time of year, we know that our God's love is here for us today. Let us now pray. Mighty God, your faithfulness is magnified in the coming of your Son, in the long-awaited birth of the promised Messiah. May we, like Mary, Proclaim your greatness as we rejoice in our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us join our voices with Mary, who celebrates God's greatness and sings of God's blessing for all who are poor and oppressed. Eternal God, we pray for the world, that our warring ways may be overturned even now, through the birth, death, and resurrection of Christ, for nothing is impossible for you. We pray for the mission of your church that we may proclaim the good news of this age as we rejoice in the gift of our Savior for all ages. And we pray for all who suffer, that we may feed the hungry and lift up the lowly through the power of your holy and life-giving Spirit. We pray for your creation, that we may safeguard its well-being from generation to generation to your honor and glory. We remember before you those who have died and pray for those who will die today, that they may rest with you eternally in your kingdom, where there is no end. We pray that you hold those concerns and joys that we shared earlier, our families, our friends, those in our community and our congregation, for those joys and concerns spoken aloud today, for those that are just in our hearts, hear us, O oh God. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we magnify you, Almighty God, forever and ever, as we raise your praise in the words your Son Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, kingdom. thy will be done, be done. on earth Let's as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, daily bread. and forgive us our debts debt. as we forgive, we forgive our, our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Do you know why we give gifts at Christmas time? Well, it all started at that very first Christmas, over 2,000 years ago. That was when God presented the world with the very best gift ever. I'm going to read that story to you while we watch my puppets act it out. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. It all came about in the simplest of surroundings in the little town of Bethlehem, 
Let's head on over there to see what's happening. How much further, Joseph? Are we nearly there yet? Mary, must you keep asking me that question? But Joseph, I can hardly walk. I must rest soon, or, or this baby is going to be born in the street. Are we there yet? Just hang on. We're not far from the inn. Oh, here we are. <sighs> at last. Hello, anyone at home? Who is it? I am a tired traveller. My name is Joseph. Joseph? Well, tired traveller Joseph, do me a favour. My wife Sarah and I were both in bed. The children are asleep. What kind of time do you call this? Oh, we've come a long way. You've got to help us. My wife's... No room, Joseph. I don't have any rooms available. It's been crazy all day. There are even people sleeping on the roof as it is. We've got no room to even swing a cat. Reuben, who is it? Who are you talking to at this time of night? Oh, hello, Sarah. He's a traveller called Joseph. And who's that with you, Joseph? Oh, Mary, my, she's a... Oh, poor girl! You must be crazy, Joseph, dragging the poor girl out like this in her condition. What were you thinking of? Oh, it's the census. I... Oh, but we... We haven't any room. You must go somewhere else. Though, just a minute. Just a minute. I've an idea. Not a very good one, but you might think, but it's better than nothing. Yes. The stable. We, we could just about squeeze Mary and Joseph in if they didn't mind sharing it with a few animals. What do you think, Reuben? Oh, I'll get some hay for the, for the manger, for when your baby's born. Joseph, come and help me. It'll be a bit noisy and smelly in there, but at least it would be warm and out of the wind. Oh, thanks. Let's be quick. I don't know how much more time we have. Joseph, quickly! Come on, dear. Come this way to the stable. Help me, Joseph! The baby's on its way! Quick! Be quick, both of you. And while you're at it, bring some hot water and cloths or something. The baby's on its way. Everything all right? Help! The baby's coming! It's going to be fine. They'll be back shortly. Everything will be all right. Just you see. <coughs> and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And that, folks, is how God presented the world with the best gift ever. Christians believe that God loved us so much that he gave us the gift of Jesus. And all we have to do is to receive that gift of Jesus and we get eternal life. Okay, so while you think about that amazing gift, let's head on over to a hillside near Bethlehem where some shepherds were keeping watch over their sheep. Ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one hundred. One hundred and one, one hundred and two. One hundred and Dad, Dad, wake up! Uh, what? Oh, sorry, I must have dropped off. Uh, where was I? A hundred and three. But, Dad, didn't you always tell me to count sheep when I wanted to go to sleep, not when I had to stay awake? Oh, I'm sorry, son. Must be getting too old for all this. Here, you let me take over for a bit, Father. You have a nap. Figure your old bones could do with the rest. Oh... OK, I suppose you're right. Come on, little fella. You and I can keep the watch together. Brrr, it's a bit cold. And look at you. You're only skin and bones. Huh. Just like the rest of us, I suppose. What a life, eh? Poor shepherds, we can hardly scratch a living these days. 
out on these hills. Life these days does not seem fair to me, and my friend is in jail for no good reason. He was just begging for food on the street when some Roman soldiers took him off to jail. And next week, Dad has to pay a ton of tax money that we don't have to King Herod so he can build his fancy buildings. These days, no one cares for poor people like us. The rabbi was telling us just last week that when the Messiah comes, he is going to bring peace. Peace on earth, justice for all, no more evil. I don't see much of that happening yet. What do you think? <coughs> Dad, Dad, wake up, Dad! Hey, what, 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 what? Don't be afraid. I've come to bring you good news. Good news? Yep, that's right. I've come to tell you that someone very special has just been born. A king. In fact, a very special king. The Messiah. Right here, right now, in Bethlehem. The, 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 the special ki king? The m m Messiah that the rabbi told us about? In b Bethlehem? T -t -t Today? Yes, you can go and check it out yourself. You will find him wrapped in swaddling cloth and lying in a manger in the stable behind Reuben's inn. A uh, manger? In the stable at Reuben's inn? But, but couldn't they find some place else for him? I mean, being a king and all. Yes, yes, he's a king all right, but not just any king. But hurry, don't waste a second. Go and find him and see for yourselves. Then go and tell all your friends. Well, don't you think we should do as he says? What do we have to lose after all? The sheep can look after themselves for a bit tonight. Come on. Wait for me, Dad. Dad, I'm going to take the lamb so we can give it to the Messiah baby as a gift from us to say thank you for coming into this world to help us poor people. So the two shepherds hurried off and found things just as the angel had said. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus, wrapped in strips of rag, lying in the manger. And that is how we will leave them today. Later on, Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus were visited by some other special people bearing gifts. But if you want to hear that story, you'll have to tune in to the next episode at Epiphany. See you then. Bye. Reading from the Psalms. A reading today is from Psalms 89, 1 through 4, and 19 through 26. Please join me in this reading from the Psalms. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. 
I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke as well. Chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. Let's listen to and for God's word for us this morning. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of God's servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. God's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. God has shown strength with God's arm. The Lord has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped God's servant Israel in remembrance of the Lord's mercy. According to the promise God made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to God's descendants forever. A word from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Let your spirit fill this place as we worship you, as we pray and contemplate you, as we wonder about your mystery this morning and the amazing miracle of your incarnation as Jesus Christ. Guide your word upon our hearts, illuminate it with your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. I haven't been here long enough for y'all to truly see my immense passion for the University of Michigan sports team. During a pandemic, the health and safety of people takes precedence over the playing of games, especially those being played by student athletes. 
many of whom work a tremendous number of hours at their schooling, and then a tremendous number of hours at their athletic training, and a tremendous number of hours in practice, all for the entertainment of others willing to pay the price for it. Yet even this fall, I was gladly participating in the Big Ten football season, even though it started a little bit later than others. I was excited about my team. I watched a, a good win and some baffling losses. And yet I still looked forward to the tradition of playing a big rival to end the season, Ohio State. The past 20 years have not been kind to Michigan football fans in this rivalry. Yet it wasn't always that way. There's been a reversal. And maybe there will be a reversal again. At least as a Michigan football fan, I can hope it. In our pair of scriptures this morning, from the Gospel of Luke, we see the reversals of fortune appear in multiple ways. We are given the story of Mary, an unwed yet engaged young woman visited by Gabriel the angel with an announcement of epic, mysterious proportions. Mary will carry and birth the Son of God, the Savior whom the Jewish people have been waiting for. This is certainly unexpected, and it is certainly strange to Mary herself. She cannot believe that this would happen, let alone to her. You see, Mary is from a small town, a small town called Nazareth, a place that people might have heard of, but they had rarely visited. She was also a woman in a man's world, and she was about to become a single mother. A small town girl navigating a world that didn't take kindly to pregnancies that happened outside the norm. Mary was facing an uphill battle. No wonder she didn't want to hear what Gabriel had to say to her at first. Yet when she did listen, when she affirms God's call on her life, she not only says, here I am, Lord, but she also breaks out into a song of praise and hope and love unlike any the world has ever known. Throughout our Advent worship services this year, we've been pairing some well-known songs and lyrics with our messages, and today is no different. Number 100 in our hymn books, in Glory to God, is a song called, My Soul Cries Out with a Joyful Shout. It falls right at the beginning of the Advent section of the hymnal, though I tend to use it at any time of the year. It's one of my favorites. You may recall I've referenced it in a worship service just a few weeks ago, and also at my installation service last month. The hymn is also known as the Canticle of the Turning, and it is based on Mary's song here in Luke 1. Her song is often called the Magnificat, after the Latin word that begins its translation. Mary's Magnificat is an ode to God and a telling vision of the future, yet it also rings true of the past and even calls for a change in the present, too. In fact, the Greek in the Gospel of Luke is so mesmerizing here because the verbs are all in the aorist tense. Essentially, in Greek of that time, a very common form of past tense of all the actions that God is making. In Mary's song, these future actions are in the past tense. Mary's song anticipates the coming of the kingdom of God. Not long after finding out that she is to be the mother of the Son of God, the conduit to the incarnation of God, becoming human in the person of Jesus Christ. How can Mary be so certain? How can Mary be so sure that God will turn things around? As the song goes, Mary, did you know? I think Mary knew. 
She might not have known everything, but she knew the world was about to turn. That the world would see a reversal, or maybe it already seen a reversal. Because this is not the first time that God has come through for humanity. This is not the first time that God has fulfilled a promise with Israel. This is not the first time that a woman has sung a song of triumph and victory to God. In fact, the name Mary is the Greek form of the name Miriam, who sang a song after God led the Israelites to victory over the Egyptian army after crossing the Red Sea. Also, Deborah sang a song of triumph after God gave her victory over the Canaanites in Judges 5. And even Hannah sang a song of triumph after God gave her victory over the inability to bear a child in 1 Samuel. Mary carries on a long tradition of women being the bearers of good news, a tradition of women, be women being integral in the leadership of and fulfillment of God's covenant with God's people. The reversal of fortune in the past echoes the covenant with God and is a forerunner of the reversal of fortune to come in the future. And it is even a call for us to create a reversal toward God's love right now in the present. As we are in the Advent season, many of us may remember a Christmas carol from Charles Dickens, the classic tale of Ebenezer Scrooge. My favorite version of that is, of course, a Muppet Christmas carol. In that version, Scrooge is played by Sir Michael Caine, and like all Scrooge characters, he is a miser who's been very successful in business, one who has amassed power and prestige and privilege. And as Kermit the Frog takes on the role of Bob Cratchit, he is the opposite of Scrooge in many ways as his assistant, a family man without the wealth and creature comforts that Scrooge has. Scrooge is later visited by ghosts of Christmas past, Christmas future, and Christmas present who show him the impact he has had on others' lives and the impact they have had on his. The bittersweet past, the new ideas of the present and the horrors of a lonely future are enough to turn Scrooge's life around in an odd reversal of fortune. In many ways, that's the kind of thing Mary is singing about in the Magnificat here in Luke 1. Yet her presence as a vessel of God's grace and love is incredible. It's a reversal of fortune itself. Even Mary's own relative, Elizabeth, whom she visits, and where she is when she sings this song, and who is to be the mother of John the Baptist, Elizabeth is an opposite of a kind an opposite of who Mary is. She and her husband, Zechariah the priest, live in the Galilee, a much more upscale place than Mary's Nazareth. We can imagine, with the Holy Spirit's help, a worry Mary visiting Elizabeth, wondering if this older and more respected relative would be ready to judge her for being pregnant before her marriage. But instead, no, we see a great love and a wonderful joy at Mary's arrival and a shared sense of profound awe over the wonders of God's mystery. Not only does Mary's soul magnify the Lord, not only does her spirit rejoice in God, her, and our Savior, Mary sees the future victory of God for the people with whom God has made this covenant. The powerful and rich will be brought low and sent away empty. The lowly and hungry will be offered a place at God's table. This is a reversal of fortune indeed, not a continuing of the status quo, not a slight change or a new policy. 
This is a revolution of which Mary sings. This coming of the Son of God is turning the world around. Many thought that the Messiah would arrive as a king like David with military might and and take on the Roman Empire or the Greeks or the Persians or whoever was occupying and oppressing Israel at the time of his arrival. Few would have predicted an unwed woman of Mary's status to be the bearer of the light of the world. Yet how do we think about the way the Holy Spirit is working in our world today? Do we lift up those we consider lowly? Or do we look to the rich and powerful to save us? To see the answer, I'm afraid we only need to look at our own politics in America. No matter which political affiliation you may have, there's very little evidence that our national leadership or even our state leadership is truly representative of the majority of our citizens. To be a politician, especially at the highest levels, one must be rich. And if not rich, appear to be rich. And if not appearing to be rich or actually rich, one must be connected or famous or at least well-educated or from a prominent family or area You get the picture. Republican or Democrat, independent or libertarian, the powerful in our nation are likely to be powerful and privileged in more than politics, whether it's business or education or simply being a celebrity. That is who we tend to look to for information and guidance, even understanding in our our world and in our nation. Yet when God broke into our world and eclipsed that line between the divine and the human, God did not choose a mother for the Son of God among the rich and powerful. And yes, Mary was engaged to a more prominent Nazareth citizen, the carpenter Joseph, whose family did come from the line of King David. Yet there's some interesting connections between the lowly of first century Palestine and who we as an American society might consider lowly. Dr. Stephanie Buchanan Crowder in her book, When Mama Speaks, compares Mary to an unwed black mother in America today. The experience of being considered less than. Even the internal dialogue Mary has with herself that shows her to be less confident in her own status that internalizing of how society sees one and having it come out of your own mouth and in your own thoughts. We see it in Mary in the hesitation she has after being told by Gabriel of this good news. Even within this Magnificat, Mary tells of being humiliated and of a low status, of being just a humble servant. The first reversal of fortune God makes in this advent is in Mary herself. She is lowly and God is mighty. Yet God and Gabriel both want Mary to see that she is blessed. Even Elizabeth tells her so. Oh, that we had relatives and friends like Elizabeth to build us up. And we hear that it works. We hear Mary even say it herself that generations will call her blessed. That is the reversal of fortune that God's mercy brought by love in Jesus Christ gives to us. We may be lowly and our God mighty, but God is lifting us up in Jesus Christ. Despite the Michigan versus Ohio State game being canceled out of caution due to COVID, due to a COVID-19 outbreak. And it didn't occur this year. Michigan has been on the losing side of that rivalry for most of the past 20 years. Yet before that, when I was growing up, Michigan had been on top nearly the same amount of times themselves. Over two different eras, there's been a reversal of fortunes 
in this football rivalry. In the world of sports, that tends to be the case, where there has to be a winner or a loser. In the world of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and God's cosmic mysterious love for humanity, does a reversal of fortune mean that all those with wealth and power should be torn down from their thrones and their comforts forcibly taken away? If we hear this song of Mary in Luke 1, and we too want to have our souls cry out with a joyful shout, what are we really saying? We're definitely not advocating for the status quo, that the powerful continue to exploit and oppress the poor. But if we want a reversal of fortunes, if we feel that's what God's calling us to do, does that mean simply that the poor are lifted up and then begin to oppress the powerful? If the tables are turned, if the world is turned, will those who want, those who are hungry, simply act like the proud and powerful once their bellies are full. Whether in sports or in politics, it certainly seems that way in our world. One side wins, the other side loses. Yet so much remains the same. There's a spectrum to the livelihood of people or or even sports teams, yet in some ways, the systems that sin has deeply infected are the things that are truly tearing God's world apart at the seams. No matter who is in charge, no matter who comes out on top, unless we, like Mary does, sees the true revolution of God coming to earth as a human being, flesh and blood, and moving into the neighborhood. Until we see that, What does a reversal of fortune in God's eyes really mean? My heart shall sing of the day you bring, O God. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. What if a reversal of fortune, a revolving change in our dynamic world brought about by the miraculous and magnificent arrival of Jesus Christ is simply bringing us into God's time. Like Mary, could we speak of God's victory as already being won? As the reversals of the proud and powerful subject to God's justice as having already occurred. In some ways, we do look at it that way. We relegate this victory to the future a look ahead to God's heavenly realm to see the true kingdom of God coming in the future. Yet Mary sings with those past verbs. In the arrival of Jesus Christ, throughout his ministry, we hear that the kingdom of God is near, or that the kingdom of God is at hand now. It's here today. Today is when the world is turning. Today is when Christ is here. And Mary, despite being in her words just a humble servant, saw that God had already changed the world through the arrival of Jesus Christ. She saw the covenant of Abraham and Sarah, of Miriam and Moses, That is what reversed the fortunes of sin and death and hell. Jesus Christ simply completed that covenant promise, and that is why Mary could sing of a victory that God brings, that justice burns toward a glorious future. In a present time, with a table, God's table, that has room for all and food for all, The visions of Ebenezer Scrooge, even if, even if they're filled with Muppets, reveal a connection of the past and the present and the future. A world where there was food on the table for the Cratchit family and even for Tiny Tim. 
could Mary's song, this Magnificat, give us hope for our future as we see the past being made real in our lives this week and in this Advent season? Even in the midst of a pandemic, we have hope. Even in the midst of political upheaval, we have peace. Even in the midst of quarantine and sadness, joy. Even in the midst of an unjust world filled with hatred, lies, racism, and violence, we have love. And that is because of who Jesus Christ is for us. And the first one to realize that, to realize that before Jesus was even born, was Mary. So let's listen to women like Mary, who see the past and future of God's kingdom as the justice and love for today. Because when we feel that love of God in Mary's song, when we feel that love so strongly that we cannot help to shout it out, to go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born, to go tell it on the mountain that God's love is turning the world around. When we experience God's love the way Mary did, that's when we will magnify the Lord with all of our soul and rejoice in God our Savior. Let us pray. We are humbled before you, Lord God. We seek to have the world turn into your kingdom with the advent of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give us the boldness and courage to see what is happening, how we are to follow you, and in what ways we are being called to turn the world around. Help us to feel your love as Mary did to see something in ourselves that is available for your purposes, to know the covenant promises that are ours in you, O God. And let us be guided by your Holy Spirit in new and amazing ways, in surprising and strange ways for the furthering of your kingdom today. Amen. Please rise now in body or in spirit, wherever you are watching this service, and join us as we affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Invitation to the Offering the ministry of the church continues as we worship online. Please prayerfully consider your pledge for next year to carry on the work of the church as we boldly spread the good news in Franklin and beyond. Please consider mailing your gifts to the church office, giving online through the church website, or using your bank's bill pay system. Joining Mary's joyful song, our souls proclaim the greatness of the Lord, and our spirits re rejoice in God our Saviour. With humble and grateful hearts, let us bring our offerings to God. Prayer of Dedication Join me in the prayer of dedication. Holy God, your love is magnified in the gift of your Son, whom you so freely share with us. Bless these gifts that we offer to lift up the lowly and fill the hungry, in your coming reign of justice and peace. In Christ's name, Amen. Though we, like Mary, may be small, 
Our God, our all, will work great things in us. May God's mercy last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from their throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. Beloved, look for the world turning in your lives this week. Feel the love of God's mercy and God's justice and experience this amazing miracle of God's love and go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born.